Let's move on to next set of turnover ratios that is working capital turnover ratio. As uh, already indicated, we have some three ratios in this. Number one is inventory turnover ratio. Then we have uh, debtors turnover ratio and creditors turnover ratio. So in this session, let's see how to find out uh, Inventory turnover ratio, debtors and creditors, all the three. Okay. To start with uh, inventory turnover ratio. Now, what is the formula? Let me just give you the formula, then we'll appreciate it. The formula is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Cost of goods sold divided by average inventory gives us inventory turnover ratio. Now, what is this ratio or what is it communicates? Okay, to understand, let's say the cost of goods sold for a company is say something like uh, 100 million. Now, this is annual cost of goods sold. Annual cost of goods sold is 100 million. And the company keeps an average inventory Let's say they keep an average inventory of uh, 10 million. So now what you can infer is their annual cost of goods sold. For one full year, they have made some sales. And for that, the cost which they have incurred is 100 million. Okay. And in their inventory, they have inventory worth 10 million. So this 100 million represents one full year position. And this 10 million represents those stocks which were not yet cleared or not yet sold. Okay. So if I create a relationship between these two, it is 100 by 10. What I get is 10 times. It means this firm is keeping an inventory 10 million and that 10 million inventory is rotated 10 times. So here you have annual cost of goods sold that is 100 million. Now probably this figure on standalone will not communicate anything serious for you. But uh, let me give you some more number. Let's say the annual cost of goods sold is 100 million. And the average inventory which they keep when they were achieving this 100 million is let's say 50 million. Okay. Annual cost of goods sold is 100 million. The average inventory which they are keeping is 50 million. And now if I create a relationship between these two by dividing 100 million by 50 million, I get two times. Now look at here. On an average, they are maintaining inventory of 50 million. And one full year, their total cost of goods sold is 100 million. It means they were able to rotate the inventory only two times in a year. Here they were able to rotate inventory 10 times in a year. Now, what is the difference? What makes sense? What is the benefit you get when inventory is rotated 10 times? What is the benefit you are losing when the inventory is rotated only two times? Let's uh, understand that. Let me put it here. If inventory is rotated 10 times and if inventory is rotated only two times, if inventory is rotated 10 times, it means I am making sales 10 times, right? Every time I am making sales of goods worth 10 million. So 10 million into 10 times. Let me just clear that. Sorry for that. Yeah. 10 million into 10 times is the cost of goods sold. That is 100 million. But the point which you have to understand is this entire 10 times is going to bring in profit okay this 10 times is going to bring in profit it means my profit making capacity is 10 times on this 10 million but if i say my inventory turnover is two times what is happening i am going to make sale only two times that is 50 million worth inventory is going out two times so my annual cost of goods sold is 100 million. So my profit making or the ability to bring profit into the business is only two times. 
it means here the profit is coming frequently whereas here the profit is coming only two times in a year that is say something like every six months it is coming like every six months so i repeat here the profit comes frequently here the profit comes only every six months and since the sale and rotation is happening there will be good level of liquidity in the business because there is a, a good amount of cash flow that is going to take place but here everything is locked in inventory in 50 million for a period of almost six months it means this business will suffer from or it will have strained liquidity it will have strained liquidity okay so these are all the common implications so wh what you have to understand is whenever you calculate inventory turnover ratio and if inventory turnover ratio is higher it is a good sign and if inventory turnover ratio is lower it's a bad sign i mean the lower turnover ratio can can lead to strained liquidity it will lead to i mean uh, I mean you, the ability to make profit is coming down the cash flows will not come or cash flows will not happen and there will be a strained liquidity position but when the ratio is very high you see a lot of uh, aspects like uh, there is going to be improvement in profit there is going to be improved liquidity position there is a uh, frequent movement of goods and frequent uh, uh, cash flows that are happening okay so that's about inventory turnover ratio probably in the next session i will take you through the data turnover and creators turnover i don't want to take it long here thank you